hi everyone you're welcome to my youtube channel and in this video we want to look at the concept of uh, inequalities and we're beginning with uh, linear inequalities which has to do with inequalities of uh, you know where the degree of the variable is one of course just as we have in linear equations okay so linear inequalities can also be called linear inequations and then what is it all about is just a mathematical statement where one expression is not equal to the other so you can say something like a plus b is not equal to c now mathematically how what are the symbols or signs that show inequality so there are four basic uh, signs we have the greater than we have the less than the great less than or equal to and then we have the greater than or equal to so we can use any of these four to show inequalities okay so when we have this it means that we are saying that the expression for instance x is greater than b so this means that these two uh, quantities are not equal the first is greater than the second. So you can also have things like x is less than c. So that means the first is less than the second and so on and so forth. All right. So as we continue, we're going to see how to solve linear inequalities. And uh, whenever you solve, you usually get what we call a solution set. Okay. So because the solution of a particular linear equa in equation is not always a single uh, value just as we see in linear equations. So for instance, if I have x plus five is equal to six, so there is just only one value of x that will satisfy this equation. So that when it is in equation, you will see that there, you will need a solution set. And as, as we continue, we're going to see how to generate this solution set while solving your linear inequations. Okay, so before we go into it, there are certain uh, basic rules of uh, operation under linear inequalities that we're going to see. The first, all of them are hinged on conditions. So let's look at this. The first is that if I have five numbers, A, B, C, D, and X, such that uh, A is less than B, and c is less than d so there are implications if you have if you want to perform some operations on these numbers so the first is that if i say a plus or minus x it must definitely be less than b plus or minus the same number so we are seeing this for addition and subtraction what it's going to look like and then secondly, um, if I decide to multiply A by another number, which is X, now remember it is less than B, it will still be <clears throat> less than B multiplied by the same number. So far as there is a condition here, so far as uh, X is positive, okay, so if my X is positive, then this condition will be, but if my x is negative, then my 8 multiplying x will now turn and become greater than b multiplied by x. So in this case, your x is negative. That's less than 0. Okay, so that's uh, for multiplication of the value a with an arbitrary value x and then doing the same with c. So now for, sorry, doing the same with b. For uh, the third thing we are going to see is here we have said that A is less than B and C is also less than B. In the first two cases, I picked an arbitrary value X and added and subtracted and this happened. I multiplied and this happened. Now, what if you pick the ones you are very sure that C is less than D? If you add it to your original A, if you add the one that is less, to your original a which is also less then it will still be less than b plus the one that is greater which is d okay so these particular conditions 
are what are important for these first operating rules. Now, I did not talk about division. That is because for this scope, we are not going to be looking at division particularly. The only division we are going to be seeing, we'll see in the fifth rule, that's when you divide by a negative number, the sign will alternate. That's if you had a greater than, it will change to a less than. So, and that's actually what is seen here, which uh, we are going to, you know, explain further as we go. Okay, so what about the second? If we have the same A, B, C, D, and X as numbers such that uh, A is greater than B and C is greater than D, so the same things will hold. Okay, so these are the basic conditions, the first and two, and you can see examples in all of this. For instance, if I say two, which is less than five, so if I add uh, maybe an arbitrary number, say 10, to the two of them, if I still have 5 plus 10, I am going to get a numbers and 12, sorry, yeah, 12 will still be less than 15. And if you subtract, let's say 2 minus 2, um, I do 5 minus 2, I will still get 0, which is still less than 3. So, so far as you subtract or add the same arbitrary number to the both sides, the sign will remain the same. If you multiply both sides by the same arbitrary number, look at this. If I say 2 times 3 and then 5 times 3, which is positive, I will still get this will be less. But if I now use negative, say 2 times minus 1 and then 5 times minus 1, I'm going to get minus 2 and minus 5. And of course, you know that minus 2 is greater than minus 5. So the sign will alternate. Okay. So let's go to the, the next one. The next one is called the transitivity rule. Okay. So it says that if A is greater than B and B is greater than C, you see the connection, then A will definitely be greater than C. That's transitivity. And if A is less than B, B is less than C, then this A must be less than this C. If I have a 5 is greater than 2, like I said earlier, if you divide this by, let's say, minus 1, if you divide this by minus 1, so it works for division and for multiplication. So this is going to become minus 5. You will see the sign will change because, of course, you will see that negative 2 will now be greater than negative 5. The same thing happens when you multiply by minus sign. If you multiply both sides by a negative number. So that is true. For this transitivity, of course, if 10 is greater than 5 and 5 is greater than 3, definitely 10 is greater than 3. Okay, so what's important for us whenever we talk about equations or inequations is how to solve, like I said earlier, Okay, so now when you have, remember we are beginning with inequalities in one variable. So if I have something like x plus 2 is less than 5, what are the values of x that will satisfy this inequality? How do you get the answer? Remember I said it will always give you a solution set, not just a single solution. Okay, so now for instance, if I solve this here, I'm going to get that x is less than 5. The same way you solve equations, your 2 will come over here and it will become negative 2. Therefore, x is less than what? 3. And so you can see that this is a solution set. How? Every number that is less than 3 will satisfy this inequation. So what it means is that if I pick something like 2 now, if I do 2 plus 2, I'm going to get 4. And 4 is, of course, less than 5. If I pick 1, if I do 2 plus 1, I'm going to get 3, which is also less than 5. So every number that is less than 3 will satisfy this particular inequality. So like I said, you're going to follow the steps of solving an equation, a simple equation. So you collect like terms when necessary. You simplify, divide both sides by any coefficient and all of that. So I am going to collect all x to one side. So uh, minus 6x coming here will become plus 6. And that is greater or equal to 
your negative 6 is already on the right hand side 4 coming over now will become sorry will become negative 4 so this is going to give me minus x plus 6x is plus 5x is greater or equal to negative 10 okay so here to get my x i divide both sides by 5 so this is the solution set it starts from negative to now greater or equal to means that my x can be negative 2 then any other thing that is greater than negative 2 if you're talking about integers that includes negative 1 0 1 2 3 till positive infinity so you can actually see that is a set of infinite solutions and you can use anyone to check if this is true you can put negative 2 if you do that this will give us 6 then negative 2 here is 12 sorry is 12 minus 6 which is also 6 so you can see both sides are equal so if i use any other thing greater it will definitely give me that this side will be greater than this side okay so let's go to example two the second example here you are going to also collect like them so i have two x three s coming here will become negative three and then on the right hand side i have negative three this one coming over will become negative seven and so i'm going to have minus five x okay so what can we do here you can uh, see that the coefficient here is negative five so i divide both sides by negative five but remember what i said in that fourth rule that when you divide by a negative number your sign will alternate so this becomes greater or equal to positive two and that's your solution so we look at the example three here it says we should solve this i will have nine x minus three x coming over will become plus three x and that's greater than 15 minus 7 will become plus 7 and so this will give me two. And so x alone is greater than 22 all over 12 and you can reduce it to my x is greater than 11 over 6 so and in some questions they can actually ask you to find the set or maybe the first three values for this the first three uh, smallest or lowest or least values for this set of solution and of course if they are whole numbers of course they will include this 11 over this is uh, uh, one whole number 5 over 6 so you can have 2 3 and 4 the, for the first of course we'll see examples on that the, fifth, the fourth example we have here there is a bracket that is to say you can have brackets in inequalities just as you have in uh, linear equations. So all you do, you follow the same process. Open up your brackets first. So we'll have negative 2x and this will give us plus 6 is greater than negative 3x and then this is negative 6. So I'm going to collect like terms now. Okay, and this plus this is going to give us x alone is greater than negative 12 and that is the solution here so for the last one this is also another bracket now having some fractions just as we did under linear equations with fractions so you will try to first of all take away the fraction by multiplying through with the lcm which is six if i multiply here by six uh, my six will be cancelled by two and three will be left so I will just have 3 into 3x minus 2 is less than or equal to, if you do the same here, 2 will be left into your x plus uh, 4. And then when I open the brackets now, I will have 9x. And so taking your, your like terms, you have 9x. And so... I will have 7x is less than or equal to 14. If you divide both sides by 7, our x is less than 2. Okay, and that is how to solve linear equations and what linear equations is all about, which is where we'll end it for this video. Kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will see you in our next video. Bye.